Hello, and welcome to my session on the Zero Data Factory from Basics to Building. My name is Thomas Sykes, I'm an SQL consultant in Edinburgh, I'm also an MCT and MCSE with numerous qualifications in the Azure as well. Um, I've been working with SQL Server since version 7, I'm the Edinburgh Data Platform User Group Lead, um, I was a co-organiser of the SQL Saturday last year in Edinburgh. Um, I work for Quorum. Quorum do a variety of solutions for enterprise and SMEs, including full managed service, but we also do lots of data and AI solutions. And we cover the whole Microsoft stack, including any other stacks as well, where appropriate. As you can see, there's a selection of some of the things we cover quite frequently. What will cover the basics? This is the beginner's guide to Azure Data Factory. Really, um, if you've done any data factory before at all, this will probably be a bit too simplistic. But if you've done some other Azure and you've not really looked at data factory yet, then this is probably the session for you. I've done some similar talks before and the general response was, can we have a walkthrough so I can follow it bit by bit and build it, build it with the slides. I did try a live demo for this with a video, but it kind of lended itself to slides. So you can follow through and pause the video as when appropriate, since it's not a person-to-person -person with any questions and answer sessions immediately there. We'll integrate the Azure database with the Azure storage account and we'll create a data flow in Azure Data Factory. This is what we'll end up with. This is a data flow as part of the V2 Azure Data Factory. Prerequisites, you're going to need an Azure subscription. You'll need to create the relevant building blocks as well. An Azure resource group. The resource group needs to contain an Azure SQL database, an Azure SQL server, a storage account, and a V2 data factory. You'll also need to download SQL Server Management Studio and Azure Storage Explorer. There will be links at the end of this presentation. The basics. The three main parts for Azure Data Factory. We've got linked services, which are you can think of these as connectors, like off to other sources like Azure SQL database and storage accounts. Then you've got data sets that represents inside the linked service almost, like um, a common delimited file or a database table or a database view. And you've got pipelines, which is your plumbing. Uh, your pipelines will have a series of data flows and web activities and activities in it, and it's your ETL and your load operations. There's a link there below. I haven't covered activity here because it's a bit too granular for what we're talking about. Our task here is to build a collective noun solution. So we will have a comma delimited um, file with I saw cows in the field in the field. And we want to bring in the collective noun, which would be I saw a herd of cows in the field. So for instance we have a database of collective nouns like gaggle of geese, herd of cows, and so on. Well we have the data blocks, the building blocks we've called already. Uh, we've talked about resource groups. Uh, the Data Scotland will contain the following items, the data factory, the SQL server with the database and the storage account. Preparation. What you'll need to do is once you've got your building block set up, your Azure SQL database, you'll need to make sure that you can configure it with the firewall so that your IP can get into it externally and run the create statements and, and the insert statements are about to follow. And you also need to Azure the in, Ensure that you allow Azure services such as Azure Data Factory to access this database as well. So I've got the various uh, slide slide there for you to access. Uh, reds where you, is where you would put your IP and save it, and the yellow box should be yes, allow allow Azure services to access it. Then on the SQL Server, we need to connect with your Management Studio, and we'll run a create table command, which creates the table, and we'll insert some collective nouns into that table. So you can see there again, cows, herd, geese, gaggle, locust, plague, wolves, pack, wave, skill, bees, swarm, and crows, murder. We'll also prepare a notepad file, well, a TXT file. You can do it in notepad, it's, it's, it's nice and easy. And it's available on all Windows boxes. Uh, Collective.txt, and you can just have it like that. Prefix, dot co prefix, comma, noun, comma, suffix, and I saw, comma, cows, comma, in the field. So that's basically three columns of data in a CSV format in a TXT file. Then we'll prepare a storage account. We need to navigate to the storage account in the Azure portal, and we'll create a SAS key 
take all allowed all allowed resource types such as service object etc then generate the sas and connection string button then we'll copy the blob service sas url it's worth noting that the start and expiry are usually only about 24 hours so you might want to tweak that a bit and extend the expiry a sas key is really just an access token with various constraints into the storage account or an area of the storage account so what we'll do is you'll create a container inside your storage account called store and we'll create the sas key as well at the storage account level and then we'll use this sas key to get into the blob then using this blob service sas url and do a storage explorer which we've previously downloaded We'll connect to the storage and then use shared access signature URL, SAS, upload your collective.txt file and keep the shared access signature URL. Keep that copied somewhere because we'll need it a bit later as well. Now we want to get the linked services running. This is like the connectors we were talking about. So if you navigate to Azure Data Factory, then author monitor, then manage, then linked services. We'll create a new linked service for the Azure SQL database. We'll use the credentials that you set up when you created this database and the server and we'll put them in and we'll create a database called database data scholar 2021 and we'll do a similar operation with creating a new linked service for azure blob storage using the blob service sas url from before in the sas url field named storage data scholar 2021 i've been very specific with the names of some of these so for instance, when we're talking about creating these, it is the link service for Azure Blob Storage and the Azure SQL Database. Next, we'll um, create the data sets. So we need to have a data set for obviously the database and the file, the collective.noun file, and we also need to have a we'll need an output data set as well to the same storage blob, but it'll be somewhere to save our output so anyway we'll start with navigating to the data, azure data factory then author then data sets and we'll create a new data set for the azure sql database name collective down list and then proceed you can preview the data and then publish it to save it previewing the data is usually quite useful because it lets you see what you've got so if you were to preview the data here you should be able to see the database table uh, information that we had like gaggle geese cows herd and so on and you can see below in, in the image how it's set out there. And data set from the blob storage is a very similar operation as well. And what we're doing is selecting link services below. We're using the CSV limited text option. And remember to set first row as header. And then you can also preview the data again so you can see what's in what's in the text file. So for instance, the image below there shows you previewing the, the file. And I can see I saw cows in the field with the relative column names. I generally find the preview data is a very useful operation when I'm building like early proof of concepts and whatnot, especially just to find out if it actually works, just pulling the data through that I'd expect. When I was building this, I ran into a couple of um, issues and yeah, I found them out quite quickly with preview data and then fixed them appropriately. So then you've got data set from blob storage and we're going to publish that and save that. Then we need to We've got the details below there for for that one and we're going to save that as we just said with the publish to save and then you need obviously you need something for um the output file obviously we need to output this by the time we get to the end we'll have some information that we want to save somewhere we want to save it in the same blob storage as the collective.txt file in the same place so what we'll do is we'll set up an, a new data set pointing to the existing azure blob storage linked service and we'll name this out file but as you can see what we'll do is we'll browse the file path only to the store the container the raw container called store and we will give it a file or directory name it will automatically be given a unique file name and stored in the store without any um, subdirectories now we're on to pipeline data flow if you Azure, navigate again to Azure Data Factory, then author, then pipelines. Create a new pipeline and name it something useful like Pipeline Data Scotland 2021. Choose the data flow, name it something useful like Data Flow Data Scotland 2021. Navigate the settings and select new. As you can see, we just add our source and use the noun file data set. As you can see, that's below there. That's all the details. There's nothing really particularly complicated here. We're just really setting up the flow of data. Um, now we can add another source, 
Lex RS source and use the collective noun list below. So this was the database collective noun list, remember the table? So as you can see, the output stream, we'll call it source database. We're pointing to the SQL, SQL server collective noun list. You can see the little icon next to data set, next to collective noun list, that's the SQL server database picture. Okay. And then you should have something similar to blue. You'll see the two sources, the source file, which is the noun file, the source database, the collective noun list table. Now we need to add the join. So that's, you can see that if I hover above source, hover on source file, then click the Wii plus, I get this drop down and I want to choose join. And then I'm going to set the join conditions. So we want an inner join because we're looking for matches. And we're looking for a match on the animal. So the cow, cow, geese, geese. In our example, it's cow or cows. So anyway, as you can see, um, in the data file, we had, I saw cows. And the problem is we had a space in there. So we'll need to use the trim command to remove the spaces before we try and join it to the database. So as you can see at the bottom, I've got trim noun. If you click on the ABC, that'll take you to the expression builder, where it'll help you build the expression you're looking for and put in the, it in the correct syntax. So you can see there the trim brackets now. And then that's joined to the database's item. item. So that should be cows, cows. And because we've trimmed the extra spaces out of the left-hand side, source files column, we should get a match. Then we need... To so we've got this data, we've joined it, then we need to add a sync. What we've actually got now is five columns. We've got three columns, columns from the original source, and then we've got the columns we've matched and the columns we've matched on, which are in the Azure SQL database. So they'll then add this, the sync, and the sync should be in Azure blob storage, data set, output file, out file, pardon me. And out file is, if you remember, just, uh, it's going to, create the file name, and it's just going to export the data that we have, the five columns. We can select common delimited, and we've built the data flow. So you've got your two source files. Well, you've got one source file and your source database. You've got your join data, and you've got your sync data Scotland, your output file. And that's how it would look exactly in the actual Zero Data Factory data flow. If you've published everything, you should be able to run this next. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the data flow. We're going to publish any other unpublished remaining parts. Usually up by publish, there'll be a yellow one, two, three. That'll give the number of items that are remaining unpublished. So we need to publish all that. Think of publish as save for now. Um, if we were to use Git integration, it might it may say save instead. We didn't choose Git integration at the beginning, so we have, don't have save option, we've got publish. So we want to navigate to the pipeline, and we call it pipeline data scholar in 2021. So you may need to turn on the data flow debug if you want to look around. So you see that the debug in the yellow square there, we turn it on. Then you'll need to wait probably five, 10 minutes for it to spin up the cluster behind the scenes and need to check to see that it spins down in, the, in about an hour. It's in one of the options when you spin it up. And then once you come back after you've had a cup of coffee, and it's spun up, um, you'll be able to press the debug green play. So if you see there in the green box, you've got the debug play button. It'll then start to run. And you'll see it go to progressing after a while. It'll refresh every, I can't remember, 20 seconds perhaps it is. It refreshes quite regularly up until a certain amount, and then you have to reset it manually. I think it's five minutes. But it won't take five minutes to run, so it should refresh automatically. And then you can see it'll have succeeded. It'll go from in process to succeeded, all, if all is well. And you'll be able to see, click into the green glasses, and glasses in the green box, and that'll give you the details. And it's just quite useful because it shows you the details of what's just, what's just run. That'll show us relevant information. You can see there, the data flow shows you our picture, but this time it shows you it's all run. And then it shows you the processing time and the number of rows that pass through. We only had one row, remember, in the source file, so you can only get one match, one row. And it shows you the times there. Finally, let's use Azure Storage Explorer. Again, we'll browse and we'll use the SAS URL again, the same URL from before, so we can access the store container in the Azure Storage blob. And if you see there, there's a, there's a whole bunch of new files that committed starting success. That's just various information. But much more important is a part hyphen zero 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 and blah, 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 and then C, CSV file. And 
what we want to do is that's our file that it's written, that's our output. So we'll click open on that. Uh, natively, it'll probably open in Excel. Um, I've got mine to open in Notepad for ease of uh, display here. So you can see that it uh, now says I saw cows in the field, which is what we had in the input originally. But it's also then got cows and then got herd. So from there, you can make up a sentence I saw a uh, herd of cows in the field. And that's our solution built. Um, you'll need to download, as I said, SQL Server Management Studio and Azure Stories Explorer. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the session.